Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Cinnamon Stitches. I am your yarn host Jennifer and today it's Piao. Now Piao stands for Premier Yarn of the Week. So every day or every Thursday I bring you Piao and we talk about, <laughs> I know it's a weird word, we talk about a Premier Yarn of the Week. This week we are talking about Premier Garden Yarn. Now this yarn has been around for quite a while. It has been in my stash for a bit because I really loved it and I actually was looking for a specific yarn and it came up on this and then I never used it. So today we're going to use it for the first time. So this is going to be the first time I've used the garden yarn um, and so it's going to be like a review but it's also going to be a tutorial because I have a tutorial planned for you. So let me tell you about the yarn. This is 284 yards. It is 100% micro acrylic. It is really soft. It's a lightweight number three. You can machine wash cold, tumble dry, low. Um, this is the color gem. It is a beautiful rainbowy color. And like I said, it's soft. I have not ever worked with this before because it's been in my stash for a while. Enter the dog. Let me close the door. So, the tutorial we are going to show today is going to be for this headband that I created to go with my beautiful beach cover-up, or top, whatever you want to call it. So, it is a tie, my hair is tied up in there, it is a tied headband. So, it's got this beautiful meshy to simulate that. So, I'm going to show you how to create the headband and the ties so that we can create this beautiful beautiful headband it's a very easy simple pattern takes no time at all to work up so we're not going to stop the tutorial and restart it like we do in some of them that are a little bit longer what we are going to do is we're just going to work the tutorial from start to finish so we're going to make this together this is what the headband looks like. It's very, very pretty. And I think this yarn is going to work up perfectly. We're gonna have a nice multicolored headband. This comes in several colors, but today we're using the rainbow because I just am in a rainbowy mood. I need a little bit of sunshine in my life. So let's go down to the table and we will review this yarn while we work up this very cute little pattern tutorial. All right, guys, let's go to the table. All right, let's get started. We are at the table. This calls for a four and a half millimeter hook. I have a G hook, so we're good to go. Now, let me find my center pole. This um, skein is wound really tight. Oh, that's pretty. Now, like I said, I have never worked with this yarn, so I have no idea what this is gonna work up like. Um, so it's going to be new for all of us, but I love, I love experiencing yarns for the first time because I'm going into this with no expectations. I just assume that this will work because it's very similar to the other yarn that I used for that other headband in the fact that it's thin and there's a sheen to it. All right. So to start, we are going to make a slip knot. And we are going to make a chain that fits from just past the, the, our, the back of our ear to just past the back of our ear. So because we all have different size heads, this number is not going to be an exact number for any of us. But um, I need it to probably be like a multiple of three, I'm thinking. If I'm doing the math correct. So just try to get it as close as you can because we can fudge this. This is not a... This is not an exact pattern. This is a, we're measuring it to our head. This is not an exact pattern. So for me from behind, let me get a tape measure so I can give you guys an exact idea of what I'm doing. All right, so for me and my big head, it's gonna be about 16 inches. So I need my first piece to be about 16 inches. That seems really big, but we're gonna go for that. So I have my tape measure here. Three, three, four. Oh, we're just chaining. Five, 
6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. We're going to check the length. We're at 11 inches. We got a ways to go. 51, 50. 2, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70. Check it again. And this is just the way I measure, measure things as I measure as I go. All right, that's about 15 inches. So I'm going to say that, that, that that's pretty, that's, we can go for 15 inches instead of 16 inches because it's a headband. So we can make the ties longer to fit our head. So 15 inches is good for adult size head. Um, I'm going to say probably 10 inches for like a small child size head would work. And so what we're going to do is this first row is going to be just a setup row of half double crochets. And I don't remember what I chained. I think I chained like 60, did I say 60 or 70? It doesn't matter. We're just going to chain two more. We're going to go on the third chain from the hook and do half double crochets all the way across. I am finding this yarn to be slightly splitty. However, I'm going to say this. The other yarn that I used for the headband was also slightly splitty. And a trick that I've learned if the yarn is slightly splitty is to keep your tension on the yarn tighter. Keep this part here taut, however you hold it and pull back on it and it will stop splitting as much. You also sometimes will have to change hooks if it's overly splitty. This yarn is really pretty right in this section. I was not expecting it to be so lightly colored because the outside is so like bold and rainbow. I was not expecting this section to be this color. I think I need my light in a little closer. Let's see if I can bring it down. There we go. Now I can see it's a little bit dark in this room today. I think it's just the way the light is shining on the house. It's still early in the morning and so the light is at the back of the house. So there's not as much ambient light in this room. So we're just doing half double crochets across. It's very muted and like pastel, which is not, it doesn't look like that's the same yarn. That's weird. And like I said, at the opening of this, I have never used this yarn before. It's been in my stash for a while. And uh, it's been going on sale a lot lately. So I figured we would try it out with a headband. And if we like it, I have more of it. We can make a bigger project. This headband is really easy to make. And once you get the hang of it, like I said, this is not going to take us very long at all. Once you get the hang of this um, design, you can whip these out for like birthday presents or like Christmas gifts or whatever for your, your kids, your grandkids, your nieces, your nephews, your friends, your neighbors, whoever you want to give one to. Anybody that likes to wear a headband. And what I'm making is the adult size, but this is very easily adjustable to children's sizes. I, however, would not make this for baby sizes because it would be a choking hazard, so keep that in mind. I don't do anything with ties like that around their head. You see, I got a little bit of a splitting right there. I just had to pull back a little bit. This yarn feels like a nice sturdy yarn though. Usually the micro acrylics feel very, um, they feel delicate. They feel soft, like overly soft. This feels very, 
sturdy. It's not rough, but it feels sturdy. If that makes sense. Like it feels like it's going to, it almost feels like, honestly, it almost feels like a cotton with the, the strength of it. It doesn't feel like a cotton rubbing it this way, but it does feel like, you know, the sturdiness of it. It feels cottony. Because cotton does not break real easily. Now, like I said, I bought this because when I went to the Premier Warehouse sale in 2019, which is the last one that they had, and it was the only one I've ever been to, um, they had a box of dollar yarn at the front and I, I went for the dollar yarn first cause I knew ahead of time they were going to have it because they announced it. And so I went looking for this dollar yarn and they had this beautiful rainbow yarn in there and I started working with it and they only had one skein. I started working with it and I didn't have enough to finish the project. So I went on the hunt for this rainbow yarn and I'm like, well, it's got to be on Premier's website if they're selling it at the Premier uh, Warehouse sale. And it didn't have a label on it. And so I came across this yarn on their website. And I was like, that looks like the same rainbowy colors. Let me order some of that. And it was nowhere near the yarn that I had already had. So I was like, okay. So it, it's just been sitting in stash ever since. Because I thought I could finish that project with it. Long story long, I had to go to Hobby Lobby and I found yarn that was almost identical but was not the same exact yarn. So I ended up frogging the whole thing. So now I have two cakes of rainbow yarn that are close enough that they kind of match each other but they don't really match. Actually, I think I made a shawl out of it. I don't think I have that yarn anymore. I'm positive I made a shawl out of it and I think I made a shawl out of it recently. But that's how this yarn came into my stash. And I was like, you know what? We haven't talked about this yarn before. We have not reviewed this yarn before. And I wanted to show you guys how to make this headband because it's really, it was really cute. And I really liked the way it turned out. And I wanted some more headbands because it's getting to be summer. And I am hot all the time lately. Like, so hot. I think it's that time of life where I'm just having hot flashes constantly. And, um... I just need my hair off of my body, off away from my face, off my neck. And so headbands it is. Well, we're still doing our half double crochets across to the end. Now what we are going to do, put our last half double crochet and we're going to chain one. We're going to turn. And in the first two stitches, we're going to put a half double crochet again. Half double and half double. And we're going to chain three. One, two, three. We're going to skip the next, next stitch and then go into the, the second stitch. So we'll skip one, go in the next one, and put a single crochet. We're gonna do that across until we get to the last two stitches here and we're gonna put two half doubles. So chain, get your hair out of there, Jen. Chain three, one, two, and three. Skip one, and single crochet. Sorry, that felt loose right there. And that's what happened last time I broke a hook is it broke right here. It felt like it was wiggling. Chain three, skip one, single crochet. And what we're doing is we're creating these little, these little loops. Okay. We're going to chain one, two, and three. Skip one. I was not expecting there to be some of these colors inside there. This is actually really pretty. One, two, and three. Skip one, single crochet. Oops. One, two, three. Skip one single crochet. And what's going to happen is because there's more stitches here than there are down here, it's going to try to curl back. But don't worry. It's going to do that for a couple rows. And then when we put in the double cro or the single, the half doubles in the final couple rows, it will pull itself straight again. So it's going to like almost arc itself. Don't worry about that. That's normal. One, two, three. 
skip one. And I really like creating a mesh pattern or the, like this type of thing. In a lot of projects, I have done this same type of style in garments. I've done it in bags, headbands. One, two, three. I really just, I like working with mesh. I don't know why. It's fun to, it's fun to work up. It kind of goes fast because it's just a lot of chaining. But also, um, I have no idea what I was going to say. Oh, it uses up less, less yarn because you're just chaining. So using a mesh stitch in something will make the yarn go a little bit further than, than crocheting it up. Chain three, skip one, single crochet, all the way across till the end of the row. And if you're faster than me, when you get to the last two stitches, put a half double crochet in those last two stitches. Oh, we got to some brown. With some gold and oranges. This yarn is not what I expected at all. The way the color's working up. Premier has some patterns for this yarn on their website that are like, um, I think they have a shawl. And that's where it looks like knit up. Well, I might have to knit with this too. I have a knit tutorial for a knit headband if you're interested. I will link that below. You could use the same yarn and knit a headband. I think that tutorial was from Premier Week. But this would be really pretty in a little knit headband. I like the crocheted ones with the mesh though for summer because they're um they breathe easier in my hair. In my hair. These colors are so pretty. When I'm working with a yarn that I don't know what to expect with the color like this, it just makes all of the neurons in my brain just go crazy. It is like so thrilling to me when I don't know what color is going to come across the hook next. And I don't, I don't know why that is, but this color is pretty. I have a bluish version of this yarn too. So we're at the end. We're going to put our last single crochet. We're going to chain three. And then in our last two stitches, we're going to put half double crochets. Now, if your stitch count is off here, it does not matter. Just fudge it. Just make it work. Just make it work. Because that's what I always do is I just make it work. We're going to chain one and we're going to turn. And once again, we're going to put two half double crochets to start the row. So in the first two stitches, put a half double crochet in each one of those stitches. Now here it's going to change a little bit because now we're working into the loops. So we don't want to have too many stitches. So we're going to chain one and single crochet into that first chain three space. We're just going to chain one, single crochet. Now we're in chain three. And in the next chain three space, we're going to put a single crochet and we're going to do this across chain three in the chain three space of the previous row. We're going to put a single crochet chain three in there and put a single crochet chain three. And in the chain three space, put a single crochet. You got this all the way across. And when you put, we'll talk about that when we get to it. Because we have to replicate the same thing we did at the front of the row in the end of the row. It's just all the way across, chain three, single crochet in the chain three space. This looks very um, fall to me, which is not what I was expecting at all. Because that don't look fall to me. 
This is an interesting colorway, to say the least. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. Do you ever try to race the person who's doing the tutorial? I have like this competitive thing. Like when I'm watching a tutorial, I try to crochet faster than them. Which is really easy because a lot of times like us tutorialists are up here like trying to slow it down so you guys understand what we're saying. But I like to, um, I get into an imaginary competition of who can crochet faster. Who can reach the end of the row fastest? Which is stupid because when I get to the end of the row and I'm watching a tutorial, now I gotta wait until they catch up. But I also get like a secret victory that I beat them to the end of the row. It's really silly. I know that it's really silly. I get bored. I get bored easily. I have to make up stuff in my head as I go. And I also, I'm going to apologize ahead of time for the frog that is currently living in my throat. Um, I get a lot of comments on my tutorials that people love the sound of my voice. It's so soothing during the tutorials. And I'm trying to use my tutorial voice, but at the same time, like, it's kind of hard and I'm trying not to cough. I am feeling a lot better than I did at the beginning of the week, though. And that's always a good thing. So. We're now getting into the boulder greens. really like this color I like this yarn and it's not splitting it's the first like set of rows was the first row was splitting a little bit but now that I like got a groove down it's not splitting at all at all we're almost to the end of the row one two three now, when we get to the last chain three space, remember, we're not going to chain three after that. So we got that one. Now we're at the end. So this is our last chain three space right here. So we're going to put chain three, single crochet, but then we're only going to chain one and then put our two half double crochets like that and like this. I'm going to chain one and turn and see how it's trying to like arc a little bit. <coughs> That's because there's more stitches here than there are here. So it's trying to curve, but it will pull itself more straight. <coughs> Sorry for coughing on you guys. It will pull straight when we get that last two rows in. All right, so now we're going to do... A half, we chained one, we turned. We're going to put a half double crochet in the first two stitches. Now we're going to go back to chaining one, two, and three. We're going to skip over this section where we did the chain one. We're going to skip that. We're going to skip the single crochet. And in that chain three space over here, we're going to single crochet. And if you wanted to make this wider, you would just repeat that. So you do the two double crochets, the first row, two double crochets, chain three, skip one, single crochet. The second row is two half double crochets, chain one, and single crochet in the first chain three space. And then you go back to the two double crochets, chain three, and then go into that first chain three space, but not the chain one space. And you can repeat that over and over again. But this is going to be our last chain three row. Then we're chaining three, two, three, single crocheting in the chain three space to create that mesh still. One, two, and three. Single crochet in the next chain three space. We got some blue happening. These colors are so pretty. One, two, three, skip. Two, three. This is like a hippie headband. The colors. Give me hippie vibes. I love it. This is like peace, love, and watercolor. One, two, three. Single crochet. One, two. Whoops. Two, three. 
So you can crochet in the next chain three space. I like making little projects like this. Um, just in between doing other stuff, you know, like if you just finished a big project and you don't want to start another big project right away, I will sometimes make something small like this just to have, you know, keep my hands busy without having to like dive into another heavy project. Because I have a couple of long-term whips that are hanging around the house that I have put on hold for way too long. And now that it's summer, I really don't want to work on them because they're blankets. Who wants a blanket on them when it's hot outside? So this is like perfect summer crochet. I saw a meme today. Um, it was on my Facebook group, I think. And um, the meme said... Uh, crocheters that say that they don't crochet in the summer because it's too hot to crochet don't understand crochet and I laughed at that because when my sister was working at the um, retirement facility she had a her boss that worked there told her that oh crochet is not for the summertime like you can't make anything in the summertime for crochet and she said, you can only make crochet money in the wintertime. So my sister was like, I disagree entirely with that because my sister all year round crochets. And she's like, well, I don't know what she crochets in the summertime. And so my sister pulled out my Instagram account and started showing her boss all the summer stuff that I make. And, and I've heard that before is like crochet is not for summer. But this kind of stuff is perfect for summer crochet because you don't have something heavy on your lap. Not anything hot. This is just something quick and easy that you can work on that you're still crocheting stuff up. There's so many things like this that you can crochet in the summertime. All right, so now we're back to the last chain three space. So we're going to single crochet, chain three. And in those last two stitches, we are going to put a half double crochet. If I can get my hook in there. Oops. A little bit of splitting happened in there. That's all right. That's all right, mama. Now we're going to chain one and two, and we're going to turn our work. That is going to count as a half double crochet. We're going to put a half double crochet in the next stitch. And I know this is different than we did the past several rows, but I have a reason for doing that. Now, in each chain three space, we are going to put two half double crochets. Because if you remember down here, we did a stitch every other, um, so we put in a, a single crochet every other stitch. So that means that this is like a two count, so one, two. So in every chain three space, we need to have two half double crochets. Okay. Half double. Oh, well, that is a vibrant red right there. Two. And then in the next chain three space, we'll put two half double crochets. We're going to do that all the way across two half double crochets in every chain three space two more double half double crochets and see how let me show you see how it's pulling this back this way it's pulling it up this way so instead of it arching like this because these stitches are spreading themselves out it's going to end up pulling them up this way now. So it's going to straighten out your garment. So just put two half double crochets in every chain three space across this row. Oops. Got a little bit of splitting right there. We were doing so good too. because you have to pull back you gotta make sure your uh, your yarn tension is a little bit tight and it stops the splitting so much I was really surprised because when I made the last headband I made it out of uh, I think it was the pearl yarn and that that type of yarn like bamboos lyocell all of those tend to be really splitty and a lot of people won't work with them because they split so much and so I anticipated it to be splitty. I didn't anticipate this one to be splitty, but it is a little bit. But if you just pull back, and I know not everybody holds their yarn like this. However you hold your yarn, just make sure that this part is taut. 
make it tight enough to to like um cross it what what is that when they when they cross a rope over a gap tight rope like a tight rope make it tight like a tight rope pretend like you're there's a little man trying to walk across that you gotta keep it taut and that will reduce the splitting look at it went from like light autumny colors to like bold colors this is a really pretty yarn and this is not going to be everyone's cup of tea because not everybody likes heavy variegated yarns. Um, it appears to do some self-striping though, depending on what what stitch you're using. So it's it's just pretty. I might actually have to knit some of this up this week. We'll see. We'll see. See, I told you guys, this is working up fast. We've only been doing this a half an hour. It's almost done. Matter of fact, it's only been 27 minutes as of right now. <laughs> That red is so pretty. So question for you, since you're still here, how are you enjoying the Piao videos? The premier yarn of the week. You guys like how we're going with this so far? I figured this yarn specifically is one of the reasons I wanted to do the premier yarn of the week because we all get so bogged down with like the brand new yarn that's on the market and we all got to have the latest and the greatest and there's a lot of yarn that's in my stash like this that I bought because of one reason or another and I haven't gotten around to use it and I really I'm curious okay so we're to the last chain three space we're going to put our two half double crochets and then we're going to put a half double crochet in those last two stitches as well. The last two half double crochets in the row. And then we are going to chain one and turn. And see how it's straightened out? I mean, it's not perfectly straight. But it's going over your head, so it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. But see how much straighter that got? We're going to put another row of half double crochets in every stitch across. So I just chained one and turned, and I'm going to do a half double crochet in every stitch across. But yeah, I, I wanted to um, I wanted to stash dive and and really showcase because Premier Yarns is always coming out with something new and improved and great and beautiful, and we all get excited like, ooh, new. But there's yarns like this beautiful garden yarn that's been on their website for years now. And it's like it's being ignored because like it's not new and shiny. And so that's why I wanted to really like take a deep look and show you everything that's on their website. Because there's so many kinds of yarn that I have not even tried yet. And granted there's some yarns on Premier's website I will not try because I'm not a big fan of the chenille yarns. There's nothing wrong with them. I just don't personally like working with them. You got to that beautiful purple color. I'm just going to keep on half double crocheting across this row. And this is our last row before we start the ties. So... Very pretty. Mm -hmm. 
And the wind chime is out there singing just so beautifully to me. It got really windy yesterday. The school actually panicked. Like everybody was talking about this severe weather we were going to get. And the school panicked like real early yesterday morning. They're like, we may have to cancel school early. And, and um, I was like, what are they talking about? The weather forecast doesn't say anything about severe weather. And I was at the doctor's with Mr. Cinnamon getting his eye checked out. And like everybody's talking about, oh, the weather's going to do this and the weather's going to do that. And I'm like, I looked at my weather app. I use a different weather app. I don't use like the national. I use one, a weather app that I find to be funny. It's called What the Forecast. And it has highly inappropriate sayings on the forecast, but it makes me giggle. And so that's the, the weather app that I use. And it's pretty, it's pretty accurate. I haven't had any problems with it. And so I'm looking like, what are they talking about with the severe weather is supposed to be coming? It's supposed to rain later. And then um, they said that there was a good chance it was going to start thunderstorming maybe at three. And then for the rest of the evening. And they're talking about canceling school and sending the kids home. And I'm like, why are they panicking? Like, that's not what my forecast says. So anyway, the regular forecast, like the National Weather Service or whatever, was calling for all this crazy weather. And people were freaking out, like, everywhere. And it was like 5 o'clock yesterday. I was sitting outside of Mr. Cinnamon, and the wind kicked up pretty good. So it was loud. It was windy. My wind chime was going. And there was not a cloud anywhere. Like, there was clouds towards the horizon a little bit, but, like, it, it was just white clouds. I was like, where are these thunderstorms everybody was freaking out about? And then <coughs> 8 o'clock rolled around. There still was no rain in sight. I was like, oh, Lord. Everybody panicked for nothing. There's nothing happening. Nothing happened. Kids made it through their entire school day. There was no rain. There was a little bit of wind in the afternoon. I just thought it was so funny. All right, now we're almost to the end of the row. We get to this last stitch right here. We're going to put our half double crochet. And then we're going to put another half double crochet because now we're going to go this way across the short end. Okay, so we got two half double crochets in that last stitch. That gets us started to go this way. And then across here, just put a half double crochet here and there where you can, where you can find a space to, to half double crochet. Then one more. And right now I'm about in the middle. So if you fold it in half, you're about in the middle. That's where we're going to put our tie. And I'm going to chain 50. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. Okay, so that seems, let me give you a measurement. That's about 10 inches. So we got a 10 inch tie on this side. We'll have another 10 inch tie on the other side. Now what we're going to do is in these chains going back up, we're going to slip stitch our way back to the top. Okay. So we're just going to put it in and slip stitch all the way up. This just gives a little more strength to the tie without adding too much bulk by adding like a single crochet. And I also really like the way that this looks with the slip stitches. So just slip stitch your way all the way back up to the top. And it doesn't matter if you twist this chain at all because it's just going to be a tie. Just keep on slip stitching. All the way to the top. And the slip stitch will actually give it more of like a a flat. Like if you put um, single crochets or something, it's more bulky. This is more of like a flat. Like a, it gives the feel of like a ribbon instead of like a rope. If you want it to be a rope, you can absolutely single crochet up the chain. 
it will just make it more rope like instead of flat like this but I like I like slip stitching and make it like a flat ribbon that is personal preference I really like this yarn I love the coloring it almost gives it like a hand dyed feel when it's worked up because the way the little color speckles work in there, it almost feels like a hand dyed acrylic. Excuse me, a hand dyed micro acrylic. I don't know what the heck a micro acrylic is. Um, sometimes I've had micro acrylics because I think Universal has a yarn called Little Bird. If I'm correct, that is a solid micro acrylic that may be discontinued but it's just something that I have and the yarn is really really soft like it almost has the feel of like suede well maybe that's not the right I don't know it just doesn't feel like this specific yarn feels this feels like I said it feels sturdy which I think is going to be perfect for a little headband You guys like my flamingo scissors up there? I got those on clearance at Hobby Lobby a couple weeks ago. I just think they're so pretty. And I'm really surprised Little Man has not stolen them yet because he loves pink flamingos. I made him a crocheted pink flamingo pillow when he was like two. He demanded it. And, um... It got really ratty and tore up from just him constantly tossing it around the house. And I made the mistake of throwing it away because it was not looking real hot. And he was so upset that I threw away his flamingo pillow. So now I have to find a way to create him another flamingo pillow. <laughs> Silly little kid. All right, now we got back to the part where we half double crocheted. So I'm going to slip stitch into that half double crochet just so that we're working at even footing going back this way. And then we're going to finish off this edge of the row with half double crochets. So there's, I'm going to say three half double crochets. And then I'm going to cut it. Leave a tail long enough that you can easily sew it in. And then tie it off. And that is what that side looks like. Now, I'm not going to repeat the other side for you because I don't really think that I need... Well, maybe I'll start it for you. But we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So, I'm just going to attach the yarn. And I'm going to attach it where this tail is so that I can kind of work over the top of the tail. Just so that it's less to weave in later. I like to do as much as I can to avoid work later. So, where our very first stitch is, we're going to attach our yarn here. Slip stitch to join, chain two, because that's going to count as a half double. And in the next chain, we are going to half double crochet, half double crochet where we can get it to. And we're going to go to the middle again. So it's like four half doubles will get us to the middle on this side. And maybe one more. That's not a half double. There we go. And then you're just going to chain 50 and you're going to do exactly like you did with this one. And then you're going to come back and slip stitch into there and then go across and finish. And then you're going to tie in your ends and then you have this really cute, what we're going to call, hippie headband. See? And you got that beautiful meshiness happening. And this will stretch out with uh, use so it will be more open the more you use it. So yeah, that is our little headband. I'm going to let you guys finish your last chain because I already showed you guys how to do that. That's easy. Chain 50, slip stitch back up, half double crochet there. You're done. Bingo, bango. Thank you so much for joining me for this another episode of Piao featuring Premier Garden Yarn. I will link this below. It will be an affiliate link because I am an affiliate with Premier Yarns. I work with them quite frequently because I love their product. And, um, yeah, if you, of course, if you make this beautiful headband, I would like to see it in the Facebook group, on Instagram, tag me, send me pictures. I just want to see it. All right, guys, I will see you in the next one. Bye.